Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the second afternoon session here for uh, the ATD Houston Conference 2020. Um, I will be your speaker for this session, Manuel Miranda. Everybody calls me Manny at the end. Um, and I am the owner and lead consultant of Ascendi Learning and the principal managing partner of ChangeBridge, an organization that uh, I partnered up with, uh, with a gentleman named Malcolm Ryder out of Oakland, California. And uh, we are looking at how to, to uh, produce change uh, as part of our, part of our services. Um, today's session is about assessing organizational culture for producing change. Uh, we've had a, series, a few topics here in the past couple of days, um, talking about culture, talking about uh, uh, change, uh, you know, the human side of change. And uh, to me, that is, that is key in helping to produce change. Um, at ChangeBridge, uh, we don't talk about change management. We talk about change production. Uh, you produce the change where you want to move for from the current state to the future state. And we believe that if you understand your organizational culture, you can produce that change that you're looking for. So I want to start this. Uh, this session today, and I want to talk uh, uh, talk about a story. All right, um, I want to mention and tell you the story about an organization, and you might not figure it out immediately who they are, um, but it might be very similar to another organization that you may know, or may have heard of, or th you think about. Uh, you see, this organization. Um, from the mid eighties until 2015 uh, has been award-winning. Uh, they've achieved the highest uh, rankings, have met their organizational goals. They, were, they do everything right as far as what they were bent and built to do. Well, that'll happen up to 2015, but in 2016, their competitors, adjusted. They were disrupted. And it was the first time in over 20 years that they did not reach their operational goals. Their business success wasn't there. So they sat back and they said, you know what? We have been the best at what we do for so long. And now we're not. How do we get back to that? So they knew that they had to change in order to gain that success again. But, you know, they talked about, you know, what are they going to do, right? How will they do that change? What are the steps that they're going to go through? They were thinking about all of that. They thought, well, okay, would, would the, the current culture that we have allow us to do that? Is it going to promote or inhibit our, uh, this need of change that we have to go through? So I'll tell you the rest of the story a little bit later, all right? Um, but let's talk about what uh, some of that uncertainty that occurs. When it comes to change, Right? There's been a lot of talk about failure and change, going through the initiative of change. Uh, one of the things is, is, you know, is our speed to adoption reasonable? Um, you know, that two out of three change initiatives or transformations actually fail or don't meet their goals. Uh, 60 to 75%. All of these numbers are being thrown out there and whether they're true or not, right? Uh, some people say that, yeah, these are correct. There are others that say, no, that's not valid and there's no research to back these claims. 
what we know over at Change Bridge is that we say, you know what? Unless you define your goals and make them measurable and determine the criteria for that, how do you know did you achieve them? So maybe two out of three change initiatives do fail or maybe 60 to 75%. We will never really know if these numbers are true. So um, I want to start off with a quick poll first. And um, what I would like you to do is that uh, you can either uh, go to that uh, URL address that you see on your screen, or you can use your mobile phone if you're sitting next to you um, and follow the instructions that are there of texting Ascendi Learn 0 um, to that number, and it would allow you to uh, get access to this poll. And the question that I want to pose to you is, is to say in one or two words, describe a cause of a change initiative failure. What would make a change initiative, a transformation fail? And I'll give you a couple of, uh, 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 a couple of minutes to uh, go through this process and start inputting your, your response. And Vivian, if you would please just uh, copy and paste that, uh, um, those instructions in the chat box. So as people will start to respond to this, uh, what will occur is that we will start seeing, uh, start seeing those words pop up on our screen. Are we having any uh, technical difficulties in in going through this, Vivian? Has anybody responded that they're not able Posted to get in? Posted the link into the chat. Okay. But when you click on the link, it says that the page is not found. Uh, okay. So should there be a number? Oh no, there's here we go. We're getting some responses okay. now. All right. Um. Yeah, pollev.com, Ascendi Learn 000 uh, is the URL. So, got one total response so far. Um, if not, the uh, 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 probably using your cell phone with the with the text message would probably be the easiest way to uh, to access uh, the poll. And I got a couple of words already popping up. Uh, communication, lack of vision. Um, there we go. So vision is uh, it's part of the word cloud is actually uh, uh, increasing in size. Let's see who else. Let's see what else comes up. We'll, we'll take another couple more minutes here. Organization, clear. buy-in, leadership, okay. The word lack. So something we are lacking in, whether it be lack of vision, lack of communication, lack of leadership, uh, lack of knowledge, planning. Great. Let's wait a couple couple more seconds. See see if we have get another change in the results here. Knowledge, communication, organization, confusion, confusion. Okay, uh, which can come from a lack of communication, uh, uh, unclear, right? Objectives, goals, right? Which is something that that I mentioned uh, earlier before already. You know, not having clear defined goals um, can lead to to uh, to perceive failure or be unsuccessful. Okay, um, 
So we got a handful that when it already went through and, and did this, and we'll have a couple more like this uh, moving forward in the rest of the presentation. So let's go ahead and continue on and uh, let's, uh, let's go over what we're going to go over today. All right. So uh, when it comes to what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about how to recognize the impact of culture on change. Uh, over at ChangeBridge, we believe that anything that occurs um, when it comes to a transformation, um, when it comes to a change initiative, whether it be a launch of a new product, whether it be a merger and acquisition, whether it be uh, uh, any type of digital transformation, um, your culture is going to determine how well it, uh, your organization will respond to that. Right? Uh, we're also going to look at uh, uh, key cultures, uh, success factors for change based on their elements of the organization. And then we're going to finally look at also how this assessment, how it applies to the various models and, and frameworks that are out there that promote change within an organization. So we'll go through all of those in this uh, topic today. So the impact of culture. Uh, the impact of culture from from us is that there's an influence uh, of ongoing change so that things progress to a known desired future state. Um, that influence must act on things that appropriately motivate the change effort that should enable that effort to succeed and that correctly signals the readiness to act and interact in real time. Uh, typically what makes or breaks the influence is found in what is communicated, how people are involved and what is the value and level of trust that exists in order to adapt to the change. That is the impact of culture. So what should we be looking for in our organizational culture? What things? Well, one thing that we don't uh, want to see or people talk about is that um, there's always a little bit of misconception when it comes to workplace perks, right? Uh, you know, while they enhance the employee experience, um, and uh, that doesn't mean that it is a determination of a good workplace culture. Um, while they're great to have, a ping pong table and a break room, uh, a, a nice coffee break area, uh, daycare services, um, all of that. Those are great workplace perks. Uh, they make the experience for the employee much better, but that doesn't really define the culture. When we look at culture, uh, it includes... Uh, expectations, experiences, philosophy, as well as value that guides member behavior. Uh, the culture includes vision. It includes values. It includes norms. It includes the philosophy of the organization. It includes the experiences as well as the expectations of that organization. Uh, culture is based on shared attitudes, on shared beliefs, where, uh, whether written or unwritten over time. And so this, uh, having a culture that is good, allows you to then enable um, to communicate whatever needed change that needs to come. Now, when we assess culture um, as it relates to being ready for change, um, there's two separate paths. Uh, 
change readiness looks at the systemic or the process approach um, of a change. While when we look at organizational culture, it gives us a view of the human side of change, that human-centric approach to change, because that is what you're changing. You're changing the, the, the values and the views of your most precious commodity, which is the human resource. They're the ones going through the change. Um, and it helps detect that, that condition of what uh, your culture and its effect on that digital transformation and change. So when we think about that, we talked about culture versus perks, uh, workplace perks. We talked about culture and readiness. And we looked at, you know, what does culture consist of? But you, now you might be asking the question, okay, so how do we do this, right? How do we assess our cultures? Well, uh, there's many different ways to do this. But over at ChangeBridge, we came up uh, with a way of detecting the conditions of change. And we believe that uh, organizations have elements that are associated with it that enable uh, change to occur if they are correct, if they are successful. So uh, we call those, uh, those change elements for us. Um, where they're an identifiable component of that organization's makeup of what they are. And then where for each one of those change elements, there is a identifiable success factor, which is the criteria for su the success of that element. Okay. That is what we have identified over at ChangeBridge. And we, you probably would think, well, how many are there? Well, we came up with 12, 12 distinct change elements that are associated with an organizational culture uh, where we could ask questions about these change elements um, and, and compare them to the success factor that are aligned to them and see whether or not uh, the culture leans toward uh, a trusting culture where change can happen. Some of these change elements out of the 12, uh, one of them is strategy, right? In which we determine that the, uh, the success factor for that is having credibility for it. Um, another change element is uh, that we've come up with is called design, um, where the success factor for that is the scope right? And this is where research and requirements drive that success. Um, another one is agility um, with a success factor that is influenced by the roles and services of the systems um, that create sustainable capacity for change. So these are just three out of the 12 that we have looked at. But we also break it down into uh, as we look at these change elements, we're also looking at uh, uh, the three tiers, common tiers that are in our organization. So who do we ask uh, and who do we uh, uh, address these change elements? Who do we ask these questions to? Well, we ask them through, through these three tiers, the executive tier, the operational tier, and the transactional tier. Uh, other terms, this is your C-suite, your, your middle management team leads, and then transactional being uh, the employees. We ask all levels um, because one of the things that we're looking for is that we're looking for whether or not there is a level of trust in the organization, if there's shared values in the organization, and if from the questions that are being asked, if there's consistent responses, then that there means that there are, there's a level of trust that builds in there. Um, so we ask them at the, at the three tiers, but then we also, for each one of those change elements, we ask three types of questions. We ask a benefit question, a behavior question, 
and an information question. So this whole assessment process dives down not only per, per roles per, or per tiers in the organization, and not only um, identifying uh, to identify the elements of the organization, but then we also look at uh, the benefit of each one of those, the behavior aspect of it and the information aspect of it. Now, you know, I can go on into the, into the, the into our science behind it, but really after this, there's a ser series of algorithms that come into play in where, uh, you know, we start calculating the responses that are occurring, putting these things all together, right? And then it just comes out. It happens, right? And I'm not going to bore you with the detail and the math behind it, but we, we, we've come up with a way to try to, to quantify a value to, toward this. And that is what, at, what we do at ChangeBridge. Now, for yourself, uh, this could be something as, as, as simple as doing a, a, doing a survey, right? Uh, there are other organizations out there that, uh, that provide that service as well. Um, or you can do uh, some mind mapping. You can do interviewing, all of that. So in essence, when we're looking at conducting a survey, conducting an assessment per se, to determine organizational culture, um, we need to ask, okay, why will we do this, All right? Well, there's three reasons why we would do this. Because we're do one, we're doing this for, for the process of determining um, what is our base in order to produce a change afterwards. Um, we like to use the analogy that um, as consultants coming in as part of a transformation, well, we would like to know what those, the conditions are. How do they exist? Very similar to, to, uh, to a doctor who will send you to go do lab work, who will then take your vital readings, find out what you are, what is your current state in order to determine what gaps are, 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 are there, and then further along, move it into what can I do to help you bridge those gaps or the fixes? Well, it's the same thing. So um, determining, uh, discovering the preconditions that exist within the culture. What is wrong? You know, what is going on? What's going to inhibit or prohibit uh, this transformation? And what is good as well within the culture that, can, that we can leverage in order to uh, help transform the change. Um, you would do this as a health check as well. Uh, uh, doing a cultural assessment is not just a one-time uh, uh, event, right? Uh, you can do this during the transformation to see how things are progressing within the within your, your culture, within your organization. Um, but then it also can be used for a base for any future initiatives or any time there has been a major uh, uh, disruption as far as personnel is concerned um, within the organization. Helps you determine whether or not your culture is, is, is set in order to move with any future initiatives as well. Uh, so that's the why we would do this. But when will we do it? Well, there's some common uh, uh, items that we would look at, right? So obviously we wanna start this before or at the very start of an initiative or project. That is the ideal state. Uh, going through a transformation, whatever this, what the case may be, knowing the culture beforehand gives you information that you would need to move through that transformation and and, and, and hit the gaps. Um, you can do it during the initiative or the project, kind of like that health check that I mentioned before. And you can do it as a recurring assessment. This does not have to be just part of uh, a part of a project. It can be something that could be done regularly 
to understand and keep uh, assess of your uh, the assessment of your culture and understand what are the changes that are going on. Because not only are our organizations being affected by internal uh, changes, right? As far as projects, digital transformation, mergers and acquisitions and all that, but there's also external factors as well that will change an organization. And I kind of mentioned before of how, how w- would that be done? Well, you know, over at ChangeBridge, you know, we do a survey, right? Uh, we'll go through and, and uh, uh, do a survey to get that information that will populate our, our, our algorithm in, into the dashboard that the company will see. Uh, but you can do uh, interviews as well. You can do an evaluation or you can do a brainstorm storming or mind mapping session to help you determine, uh, you know, the cultural uh, uh, assessment. Um, the method that you would use will depend on, you know, the size, scope, and and the desired outcome of your initiative and the organization. Um, for a very large organization uh, doing, you know, interviews or uh, anything like that would take be too time consuming. Uh, so you would have to take that into consideration in your methodology of how you would do that. Um, there's a few of us here, and I know that this is, a, a, you know, the Association of Talent Development, and there's been many here that have, you know, done analysis uh, before, but I'm wondering how many of you have actually, uh, have actually conducted a, an organizational cultural assessment before? Have you even considered it? So we're going to do another poll real quick. And this one is fairly straightforward, right? Um, And you can use the same method uh, to access this as before. Um, If you already have it on your phone, um, you should should just be able to type in the next uh, response. And uh, if you type in a A for yes or a B for no, uh, we will start getting this to to populate um, in front of us. So... As of right now, there's, well, there's one no at 100%. So we'll see if, uh, if this changes at all. And I'm trying to see the number of responses that are coming in. Hmm. So... Not many people have done a cultural assessment uh, prior to it to it to the initiative, and and I the question there says change initiative, and uh, the reality is that anything that we launch, any new program, whether it would be a talent development program, uh, that is a change. Okay. Um, interesting. So nobody has done one. Okay. I was, I was expecting at least one person. I can't answer this because I can't answer the, the survey myself because then it will skew the results. But uh, it doesn't really surprise me that not many people do an organizational cultural assessment. Uh, I think the our shift of how we address change, how we address talent development, how we address uh, uh, programs in an organization. Uh, this is something that uh, I believe should be in the forefront. It gives us, it gives us the gaps. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on, okay? So let's say that you to conduct a organizational cultural assessment, right? So what's next? Well, for us, when we, as, I'm, as we are applying it for, for, for a change initiative, of what is going on, um, you know, we're going to look at the models and the frameworks that we use. There's so many out there. And when it comes to 
uh, change management, as a, as they say, right? We call it producing change. There's many models out there. The models and the frameworks um, from change bridge perspective are the are our guides, are our recipes of how to go through this. Um, and there's a couple of popular models out there. Well, one of them, and I think some people some people have seen this one uh, from before, is Pro Size at Car model of change. Uh, a couple of sessions before this uh, uh, had displayed this model, and so doing a cultural assessment uh, of the organization provides a mean for us to look at the model slightly different, right? Add CAR, which is the, the acronym for Awareness, Desire, Knowledge, Ability, and Reinforcement from ProSci, has, uh, has two stages, um, has two zones. Um, the cultural assessment allows you to look at the gaps and what is needed to go to this enablement zone because you're understanding the gaps of what exists there um, so that you can accomplish raising awareness, increasing desire, and working through the organization and getting knowledge of that change of what needs to be done and moving forward, right? So the information that we get from, from the assessment provides us the, the, the fuel for us to step through this process uh, effectively. Um, in Cotter's eight step model of change, right? They have uh, three stages as well in which they're increasing and going through. And for the cultural assessment, what it does is that it provides us the means for us to for, for create the climate for change, right? Where we create the urgency, where we create the coalition and we develop the vision and strategy to move forward. And that allows us to build the plans and means to move forward in the following steps. So those are just two of the, of the models that are out there. Uh, there's many more. There's McKinsey 7S. Uh, there's uh, uh, Mass, uh, Bridges as well. Uh, there's quite a few of them out there. Uh, but it doesn't matter which model or framework you apply it to. This provides you the necessary information for you to move forward um, to go through that change, to go through that process. And all of these processes have plans that are associated with it. So uh, this information that you obtain from the cultural assessment allows you to make a good communications plan because it'll be directed to the appropriate personnel in the appropriate language with the correct set of empathy and compassion that they need for them to understand the reason for the change and why we're doing it and how we're doing it. It'll also go into the training plan as well, help you address those gaps, finding out where that needs to move forward. As far as from a, from a culture uh, uh, point of view, and it also helps you into developing the plan for the evaluation of the adoption of that change. Uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier in the session was about uh, the success rate of change and how there's an argument of how much, how well it is. Well, uh, sometimes I believe it's just we don't clearly define what the goal of the change is. Uh, organizations want 100% adoption immediately. Well, that doesn't, doesn't happen that way. It really doesn't. But we can, based on criteria and identifying the correct goals, can set a standard of how we're going to evaluate that adoption based on a clear set of criteria. And that cultural assessment helps us identify that. Okay, I have one more final poll to do, and then I'll stop, I promise. Um, so... As a change practitioner, 
And we're all change practitioners. Whether you're an instructional designer, whether you're a training manager, where you are a, uh, a talent development director, we are all change practitioners. I'm going to doing that. Um, what prevents you as a change practitioner in completing a, and uh, in conducting and completing an organizational cultural assessment? What prevents you to do that? And I'll give you a couple minutes to respond um, via the uh, Poll EV uh, website or on your phone. Right. So the first word that popped up is knowledge. Okay. Resources. Okay. Leadership. Okay. Manager support. Interesting. The word cloud is, is coming out with all of these words and they're pretty much all the same size. So everybody's having a, 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 a very specific, uh, uh, response to this nothing more uh bigger than the other uh well never mind support just came <laughs> support just took took the lead there um yeah this is it's an interesting uh view of this because um i believe that as as talent development professionals as change practitioners in uh, these disciplines that we exist and work in, you know, for the human resource, uh, there is a level of, of education that we must provide to organizations when it comes to not only talent development, not only change management or producing change, uh, there is some, there's some education that we need to provide. Uh, there was a, a session yesterday about, you know, you know, do we have a seat at the table? Well, this is the reason why, um, because not having a seat at the table, you don't have that support. You won't have that access. Uh, you know, leadership, uh, not seeing the value of it, uh, can deplete the chances of doing this and providing, uh, uh, you know, returns for what you're doing, right? So, okay. Oh, interesting. Um, I like the responses that are there. Oh, just saw the word participation there as well. Uh, very interesting look. Okay. So, you know, we kind of talked about the why, the how, the when to do cultural assessment of the organization you know, we looked at, you know, the, the, you know, not to confuse, you know, the organizational culture with workplace perks. Uh, we looked at how to identify and use this in different uh, models and frameworks and how do we apply it there, right? Um, all fairly straightforward, but it's something that we should do. Well, you guys remember that story that I told at the beginning about that one group, that one organization that was very good um, for a long time. And then all of a sudden one year they just slipped. Well, you know, that organization, right. Did they did have a happy ending, right. Because uh, they did get back um, to receive those awards and they did reach those organizational goals. Um, because they went through the change, right? And again, this could apply to any organization, but the one in particular that I took as the inspiration for this was the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team, right? Uh, the U.S. Women's National Team uh, started in the mid '80s when they when they they came about, and since then, uh, through now. They have won uh, four World Cups. Uh, 
Uh, they've been ranked one or two in the world for almost the whole time. Uh, they had uh, one unprecedented five uh, Olympic medals all through that span. But the one year that they did not meet their goal was in 2016 in the Rio Olympics. The year before that in 2015, they had won the World Cup and were ranked number one. So in one year, they went from being the best team in the world, World Cup champions, to not even getting a medal in the following Olympics in 2016. The organization said to themselves, we need to change this because our competitors have changed. And that's what they did. After the Rio Olympics, in 2016, going to 2017 and 18, they changed strategies. They changed personnel. They, they, they shifted their whole philosophy of how they're going to play the game. And it resulted in them winning the World Cup again in 2019. Not many people know that they, they had a hard struggle because not only were they, they shifting through a change internally, both personnel, strategy, right? The philosophy stayed the same. They still had the sh same shared values, but they had to do all of that. Plus all the external factors that was affecting the team. Not being recognized um, like their male peers as far as salaries, as far as the successes, right? The perceived successes and the backing. So they were also fighting that external. But the culture within the organization allowed them to do that change, to go after that disruption, to go through that change and be successful again. Uh, this book, written by Caitlin Murray, uh, talks about that process. Talks about the team um, in whole, but really dives into that period from 2015 through 2019, and what the struggle that they did, uh, that they had. Um, Alexi Lalas, uh, uh, one of the famous players from the men's uh, national team, uh, read the book. And he said he gobbled up every page into the history of the history and the culture of this team. Uh, many of the players who were interviewed for this book talked about you know, and stated the culture that we had allowed us to do this. It wasn't easy. because they'll, they'll say that it wasn't easy. They had to let popular players go. They have to shift their, their strategies and all that. But from an organization perspective, they got back to being on the winning side again. So um, this has been my presentation on assessing organizational culture for producing change. Um, are there any questions out there? Vivian, are there any questions in the, in the chat box? There's, there's nothing that's come up. Okay. Um, but if anybody has any questions, now's your opportunity. Or even comments. Yep. Any or all of the above. We just have a few seconds before we close. So if you can also make sure that you rate the session in the app so you can go to the um, ATD app that you've been using and um, rate today's session. We'd appreciate it. Um, Shannon's just posted a question into chat. I've never completed a cultural assessment. Any resources that you recommend to start? Is there a template or planning guide? Yes. Um, there's some, there's some resources that I can, that I can uh, uh, share with you. Um, you can reach me at the email uh, below that you see on your screen. 
Um, I know that this is going to be recorded, so you can probably go back to that. Um, but there are some researchers that are out there that can help um, us go through this uh, process and help you start this process as well. Um, we have a formula at ChangeBridge uh, uh, that we do, but uh, there's no there's no wrong way of doing this. It's about starting the process. All right. So I thank you for your time. Um, there is my contact information you see in front of your screen. And if you do have any further questions, uh, you can reach me through the HOVA app or um, at the email that you see on your screen. Thank you.